Hello, folks. Today we are talking about convars. Um, convars are console variables, um, and they allow users to change certain aspects about your plugin. It allows them to change certain uh, aspects of their game, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be learning those today. Um, let me just set up no decals, no new decals required pragma semicolon one and then on plugin start. Okay. So you guys have seen convars before, hopefully. Um, it should be something like this, like if you're editing SV allow upload one, for example, would allow your server to accept uploads from clients. Um, CL underscore whatever is a client convar, so they can so clients can change something about their how, how their clients running. Um, and if you guys could guess, SM underscore blah 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 allows you to change something about how source mod works. Um, super useful for making some little tweaks, uh, or changes. Um, let's go ahead and make an example. So convars can hold strings. Um, they can hold booleans. They can hold floats. They can hold basically, uh, basically anything, um, so I guess we'll just jump right into it. So when you create a convar, um, you do something like this. So you'll do convar and we'll say, uh, we'll say it's a Boolean, uh, and we'll say kick friend. I don't know, just something random. Um, and we'll set it equal to null because you know, we haven't, we haven't done anything with it yet. Um, and if we use the function, we'll say global convar bool kick friend, this we're making our own here. So we're going to have to use create convar and a lot of information shows up here. Um, so we have to use the name of our string or the name of the convar itself that people will actually use. Um, so we'll do like SM, uh, like kick friend, right? It's default value. Uh, we'll set its default value to zero. So no. And then we have to add a description. Um, for a description, we will use, we'll say kicks my friend when he joins. Um, and that's basically it. There are, there are convar flags as well. Um, the flags can be useful for certain things, although you really shouldn't need to really mess with them. Um, there are things like, uh, F convar notify. We haven't talked about bit fields, I don't believe. Um, maybe a little bit, but this will make it so when this when this convar is changed, it gets put in chat um, or put in console or whatnot. Um, also, if we do something like a CVAR replicated, um, it'll it'll set this on clients, I believe, but fairly unimportant for now. Um, <clears throat> cool. So once, once we, once we set this information, um, let's say public void on client put in server, we'll have our client index. Um, let's say our friend's name, we'll say char name, max name length because anytime we're storing a name, we need to use this variable. It's the maximum a name length can be in the source engine. And we'll do get client name. 
um, client name, size of name. So we'll just say if their string equals name, let's just say if their name is toast, let's say you have a buddy named toast. So if the client's name is toast, then we want to kick client. All right, fairly simple, and we'll we'll add a uh, a thing here later. Okay, so right now, if uh, the client's name is toast, we will kick them. Um, but what we want to do is we only want to do this when this convar is set to is set to the value one. So the way to do that. Uh, we would put this entire thing, we would say, uh, if kick friend dot bool value is true. So if that is true, then we want to, we want to kick them. So you can do something like this. And then I'll sc scoot that over one. There we go. So if kick friend is true, then we'll get the person's name. And if their name is toast, we'll kick them. So this is this is an example of how to use kick friend. Um, if you're looking for someone specifically, you shouldn't use their name, but this is just an example. We should be using their Steam ID. So let's create another another way of doing this. Instead of a boolean, we'll do string, right? And instead of storing a number, whether or not we should kick them, let's store their Steam ID. So the default value should be nothing and we'll say and instead of a boolean we're just going to be getting their steam id now so we'll have to get the char so we'll get steam id right and we'll set it to like i don't know 64 uh and then we're going to get client auth string i believe um, auth string is v in v is deprecated, I believe. Um, so instead of using it, get client auth string. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, we're going to be using get client auth ID. There we go. So to get the client's like Steam ID, we're going to give them the client index, and then we have we do have some choices here. Um, we can do auth ID engine. Uh, this is all in the documentation, by the way. Uh, if you look up get client auth ID, um, we can do auth ID underscore engine, which will get you the Steam ID based on whatever engines being used at the time. Um, you can also do auth ID Steam two, um, which is uh, actually. Yeah, Steam Steam two is is the standard one, I believe. Steam two is like the Steam underscore zero one, and then the numbers, um, and then we can do auth three, which is this style, um, or we can do auth ID Steam underscore uh, Steam ID sixty four, and then this is the standard, just sixty four bit. Uh, uh, Steam ID, and um, yeah, so that that's basically it. We'll use we'll use Steam ID sixty four uh, for this for this case, and we're going to be storing it in Steam ID. Uh, and of course, we have to pass in the size of Steam ID. Awesome. So now that we have the Steam ID um, of the client that we're that we want. Um, this value is going to have this steam ID. So we need to get convar string. Um, so basically there is a native in the convar class called, uh, get string. So what we can do, we can say char convar value, um, we can say, uh, you know, 64 or whatnot. And if we call this dot get string, 
We store it in convar value and then the size of convar value. Uh, let me scoot all of this down just for sanity. Um, cool. So now, now we have the convert value and now we have the steam ID. So what we can do, we can say if string equals, so if the convar value is equal to the connecting client's steam ID, then we're just going to want to kick the client because we don't need the name anymore. We're not doing it based off names. Um, this is, this is good. This should work. Let me check to make sure it compiles. It does. Um, and this will kick clients based on what their steam ID is. Um, since the default value is empty string, um, we can make this a little more efficient. We don't have to get their Steam ID unless we know that we're going to kick them in the first place, right? So, or, or that, we're, that we're even checking. Because if this is empty, there's no point in getting their Steam ID, right? There's no, like, we're not going to... We're, we're just getting this information and then knowing that it's not going to be equal because they're going to have their Steam ID. Um, so, what we can do is that we can do something like this. And then we can say if string length, so if the length of convar value is greater than zero, then we can do this. So if the convar is even set in the first place, right, then we can do this. And this is just the string length. This is how many characters are inside of this. So in this case, the string length of this string would be three. But since there's nothing in it, the default's going to be zero. So that's just a, a little efficiency tip. Another thing to be careful of that is super important is um, on client put and server. Let, let's look at what it says about on client put and server. And see if we're, you know, if, if we're doing anything wrong. So I'm, I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to just copy and paste into here what it says about on client button server. Called when a client is entering the game. Whenever a client has a Steam ID, whether a client has a Steam ID is undefined until on client authorized is called, which may occur before or after on client put in server. Okay. So we're getting a Steam ID here. So we're just trying to make sure that there's no errors. We're getting a Steam ID before we're guaranteed to have it, right? So it says whether a client has a Steam ID is undefined until on client authorized is called. So we won't know their Steam ID until on client authorized. So we should change this to on client authorized because then we should be guaranteed to have a Steam ID. So now if we edit our um, if we edit our thing here to match the function prototype, oh look, it looks like we were given, it looks like we were given the, the steam ID. So we don't even, well, we, we don't even have to get the steam ID, right? So we can just remove this and then do this guy. Okay, that got a lot simpler, right? Um, so now when we compile, it still compiles okay. Um, and we were given the same ID because now we're using the correct uh, forward here. This is called when they, whenever they get the steam ID. And it looks like we are set to go. The only thing to keep in mind is that uh, under the parameter for auth, it says, it says the following. It says, um, it says client steam two id if available else engine auth id so this is going to be auth in this case is going to be in the form of like steam underscore one two whatever something like that so you just have to keep that in mind but uh this looks good to me let's see it compiles this is all good and this is just a basic example of how to use convars um instead of 
uh, create convar if we were trying to get a convar that already exists um, we could do something like this so uh, global convar boolean allow upload we can say find convar and then we pass sv allow upload and what this will do is it allows us to check for an existing convar value. And then if we wanted to see what that convar value is, we would just do dot bool value. Um, if you wanted to check whether or not, um, if you wanted to check whether or not a convar um, value has, has like changed, um, you can add a change hook so you would do something like this. You would say uh, global convar value dot add change hook, and you would say on upload changed, right? And then you'd create a new function here. So you would say public void on upload changed. You'd get the convar. Uh, you get the old value and you get the new value. And anytime allow upload is changed, your hook here will be called. So let's say, let's say, um, uh, let's say someone wants to change this value. Um, let's say there's a plugin or something, I don't know, some, some, something, something about this value or, or an admin is trying to change it uh, through like smrcon, which is, which is a command, smrcon. This is a command that allows admins to like use remote console. Um, or if it was changed using smcvar, whatever, this will happen. And what you can do, you can say like, okay, uh, if string equal old value, um, or let, let's say if the new value is one, so someone's trying to change it to one, um, you can just override it. Uh, you can just do this. Bool value equal to false. So if someone, if someone tried to change it, you can just quickly throw it back to false and it should be good. Um, and, and you should be good to go. So this, this will basically force that whatever, even if someone tries to change it, it'll force SV upload to be zero. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, if you can tell, I just set the bool value here to false. Um, you can, you can set the values like that. Um, you can do that with int value and float value as well. If this was a float, you would do float value. And, you know, that would be that would be fine. But it's not. It's a Boolean. You just have to be careful what the data type is. If it's a 1 or a 0 that's supposed to go after it, it's a Boolean. If it's a string, I presume you already know that. If it's a float, it has the floating point number that looks like this. But there are no, there's no checking whether or not it's true or not, like or whether or not you're using the correct, uh, the correct, the correct operand here, because if, even though it's a bool, if you, if you set float value equal to like 3.5, uh, it'll still compile fine. It'll do everything fine. So you just have to be careful. Uh, you know that allow uploads a bool. So you want to set bool value. Um, you can also get the default value. If you do get default, um, get default and then, you know, you would have like a string default, uh, and, you know, you, you could do something like this and that would get the default value of the convar. You know, there's all kinds of stuff you can do, but that's all in the documentation. Go look it up. Um, if you guys have any questions, always. Uh, let me know in the comment section below, but this is just a quick run through of convars. So have a good one.